However, it is practical in producing cutting edge science. And the hope for the LHCs, we'll see things that we've never seen before and we'll understand things that we haven't understood until now. Why then is this great LHC hidden in a tunnel 100 meters underneath Europe? Well, you gotta put the thing in a tunnel. The first reason to put it in a tunnel is there are cosmic rays coming from outside the Earth and bombarding your experiment. So you put it inside a tunnel so that the cosmic rays don't disrupt your beam. So the depth keeps cosmic rays from tainting results. But even more important, perhaps, is that when the beam is turned on, while it's going, it's emitting this radiation. And the radiation is coming out, and you need something to shield the radiation from coming out of the tunnel. Radiation, which is why you can't be in the tunnel when it's on. If you're in our collision hall and you're, you're hugging the beam pipe while the collider is running, but you would die almost instantly from the radiation. So the big question is, what actually happens to all the radiation? When there is no particle left, there is basically no radiation left. When you turn it off, of course, there's no radiation. Still, the LHC is not without dangers which is why huge care goes into keeping people and the machine safe. With hundreds of trillions of protons traveling at that kind of energy, one situation is particularly worrisome for scientists at CERN. A disaster called a quench. When you're steering these protons that are going that fast around and around in a circle, you're, you're doing that using very high magnetic fields. And the way that we generate those magnetic fields is with a, a, an electric current flowing in a wire. 12,000 amps of electrical current. Now considering your entire house only uses about 100 amps, the LHC's whopping 12,000 amps must run through superconducting cable. And to make a cable superconducting takes a lot of work. It's a very low temperature phenomenon. The cable has to be kept extremely cold, about as cold as the dark side of Pluto. In order to get those kinds of very low temperatures, about 260 degrees below zero, we use liquid helium. Which is dangerous in itself. You can't touch this stuff. Because it's so cold that it would be completely frozen. <laughs> if the temperature of the liquid helium rises even a few degrees, the results can be disastrous. Something could happen that causes the superconducting cable to heat up above to a temperature above where it superconducts and suddenly this 12,000 amps sees a resistance, an electrical resistance. That's a quench. Now the wire acts like any other wires, so it acts like a heater. It heats this magnet up and now the liquid helium turns into gaseous helium. All in a fraction of a second. So now you have to get that deadly gas the heck out of there. And that gas has to go somewhere, otherwise the magnet will blow up. Which you obviously want to avoid. You have to have very sophisticated systems that, that monitor for quenches, see quenches coming, and when they see one coming, they dump all that current out very quickly into uh, quench resistors. Because if the magnet goes down, suddenly this beam, packing the force of a small aircraft carrier, hitting the beach at 30 knots, is now flying out of control. When you hear the LAC guys talk about, oh my god, there's a quench, they really have a problem in the sense that that quench could, cause, could missteer the beam. And that beam, if, if it's missteered, will now go right into the side of a magnet and blow a hole in the side of that magnet. If a beam got loose, well, it would punch a hole in the wall about 100 meters deep. If you were hit by the beam, you may wonder, what, am I going to vaporize? No, you wouldn't vaporize. You would just die. And I think relatively quickly. Which is another reason why there's no one in the tunnel during its operation. But it's a very real danger for the very expensive equipment. It's something we will have to deal with, but what I can say is that every single magnet in that tunnel has been tested, quenched, put through its paces on the surface. All of this work, all of this technology, and all of this danger to find something, and one possible something that could address everything, is called supersymmetry. The fundamental essence of supersymmetry is that there should be a symmetry between particles and forces. What the heck is supersymmetry? Supersymmetry, that's a toughie. Supersymmetry is a theory where effectively every particle has its own superparticle. For every known particle, like the electron, uh, there's some other particle, which is the partner of that particle, the superpartner. Except that it's heavier, more massive. If we look hard enough, we should find a whole other double copy of this world where there's a force-carrying particle for every matter particle and a matter particle for every force particle. It's a symmetry between matter 
and force. This is often like to talk about supersymmetry as, as being a mirror. You have a mirror, and on one side of the mirror is the, the real universe, and on the other side of the mirror are your supersymmetric particles. Everyone who believes in supersymmetry believes that when we go to high enough energies, the, the mirror will break down and we actually will see particles and their superpartners at the same time. The LHC may actually find supersymmetry, or for that matter, extra dimensions, dark matter, or the God particle. All of these theories are there to try to explain what's happening at this fundamental temperature, at this fundamental energy, which seems to be an underlying part of particle physics. But they could also find something else. The LHC could find something we didn't even think of. Which could be the greatest discovery of all. And that leads to the final question. We understand what we're looking for, how it works, where it is, who was involved. But we have yet to understand why. Why? Why? Pourquoi? Why? Why? Why go to such great lengths just to witness the momentary production of these historic particles? Could I have to? Nature has just an infinitude of phenomena that it hands us, and we just are there to discover it. I want to find truth. That's why I'm here. There are more open unknowns ahead of us. This is a truth. Nature itself has zillions of surprises for you. We're about to open a, a new door. It's truth. That's why we like science. There's something behind what's happening, and I want to know what that is. The LHC is a doorway, and when we open it, we're going to find some answers. I don't know what. Whatever it is, it's certain to be the next Big Bang.